In this lecture segment, we are talking about art at the end of the 19th century and in the first part of the 20th century. We'll focus on works of art typifying styles or movements within this period of time that continue the characteristics of modernism we've been tracing. These isms are often opposed to Western culture. Some of these isms wanted to use art to change the world. We begin with our isms in the 1890s with symbolism. This period of time saw increasing interest in the workings of the human mind. Sigmund Freud's On the Interpretation of Dreams is published in 1890. There was also increasing anxiety about the turn of the century from 1899 to 1900 and increasing international tensions resulting from colonialism and imperialism that will contribute to World War I. It's a period of increasing production of machines for transportation and war with highways and air travel. The consumerism we saw during the 19th century in France has become more widespread and people buy stuff. Edvard Munch's Scream is probably a work of art you'd seen before. It's by a Norwegian artist who contributed to symbolism, an internationalism that rejected the Impressionist interest in depicting visual reality through light and color, and instead focused on some of the threads we saw with Van Gogh, using art to express the feelings or state of mind of the artist, art showing the world of dreams and imagination. Munch had lost many family members to illness, and many of his works relate to loss and isolation. Munch depicts a human figure on a severely tipped bridge, creating a strong diagonal from the foreground to the background. Wavy lines in the sky and swirling lines in the water create an active moving image, and the use of complementary colors, the blue and orange, add to the intensity of the image. The primary figure is an abstraction of the human body, emitting a silent cry, a pungent expression, with the visual elements communicating the figure's state of mind. Scholars often discuss this work in the context of the end of the century, the fin de siècle, the anxiety and anguish that accompanies movement of time into a new century. Munch wrote about the story of this work, saying, Above the blue back black fjord hung the clouds, red as blood and tongues of fire. My friends had left me, and alone, trembling with anguish, I became aware of the vast, infinite cry of nature. This work of art still depicts subject matter from the natural world, man on bridge but does so to express emotion, a state of mind, loneliness, and despair. As an international movement, symbolism's emphasis on showing emotions in art and showing them without naturalism has a profound influence on our early 20th century avant-garde isms. The works of art we're talking about in this lecture are categorized as modern art with a capital M. They are part of the trajectory of modernism that we've been tracing. Expressionism during 1905 to 1915 has multiple groups or styles who contribute to modernism by rejecting the imitation of nature as the primary purpose of art, using color and alterations of form to communicate artists' individual responses to the contemporary world, producing works of art that are anti-naturalistic, filled with expression of emotion. Henri Matisse contributed to Fauvism, an early 20th century-ism in Paris that originated from a derogatory term fauve, meaning beast, that a critic used describing the art of Matisse and others. Matisse was, inter Matisse was interested in using color to express emotion, and he wrote, Color was not given to us in order that we should imitate nature. It was given to us so that we can express our own emotions. Think about what a different approach this is to art making than what we saw with David or even with Monet. Color does not need to match nature to be used to produce visions of nature. Color is instead to be used for expression. Matisse collected African sculpture and saw works by Van Gogh and Cezanne and had a deep knowledge of art history. We see him using his art history knowledge in this work, The Blue Nude from 1907. By choosing this subject, he places his painting within art history Titian, Ancre, and Manet. It's a typical subject matter, but he alters the body shown for aesthetic ends. The body adopts an impossible pose with distortions in the body, but he creates this form out of non-naturalistic color. It may, however, show the influence of a trip he took to Algeria when he interacted with a people who use indigo dye for their clothes that rubs off onto their skin. The figure he creates is removed from the natural world and removed from the viewer. It is less accessible, less erotic, less desirable. He wants us to read this work as a painting and wrote about this work of art saying that if he met a woman like this in the street, he would run away in terror. Above all, I do not create a woman, I make a picture. 
He wants us as viewers to read this work as a painting, as a painted surface first, not as a woman, and this makes it modern. We see him providing a similar modern spin on a canonical work of art in his Joy of Life, which is his take on the pastoral picnic we saw in Giorgione, Titian, and Manet. So again, canonical subject matter, but the paint handling is so not. It is such a departure from how artists typically use color as they depict the natural world. Matisse talks about how he wants to create joyful art, and here he uses color to express joy. This is an exuberant setting with happy figures composed of color. He's not concerned with historical specificity, making it from a certain time and place, but in using form to create an evocation of the natural world intended to help the viewer feel joy. We shift now from Fauvism in the early 20th century in Paris to German Expressionism, which includes a range of isms and artists. Käthe Kollwitz, a German printmaker and sculptor, used her art to direct attention to human suffering, often focusing on laborers and mothers. She was a teacher at the Prussian Academy and even took sculpture classes in Paris. This etching, and remember the expressive potential of this medium that we saw Rembrandt using, is from a series and depicts a scene from a 16th century peasant uprising during the Protestant Reformation, as peasants fought back against the power of the church and landowners. She focuses on Black Anna, one of the leaders of the revolt, whose gesture expresses her full-bodied uprising. The rich diagonal lines used to create drama and movement, not using color as other expressionist artists did, but just ink on paper to achieve such heart-rending emotions. Die Brücke, meaning the bridge, is formed in Dresden in Germany in 1905 by four students in their early 20s. They had no art training and are self-taught, which they believed helped them to express more pure emotion. They publish a manifesto, a mission statement, and say they want to stand up to older forces, but then end up selling their art through galleries, not academic exhibitions, to the very folks they are critiquing. They love Munch, Van Gogh, Seurat, and see their works at an exhibition in Dresden in 1906. They love Munch's heightened expression and rejection of naturalism, and they use that visual vocabulary to point out the ills of society so they can build a bridge to a better future. This painting by Kirchner shows an urban subject, folks leaving an evening concert, showing individuals in the sea of humanity. But these figures seem mask-like, unconnected to each other. The figures are shoved up to the front of the picture plane, no illusion, no recession into space, just a jumble of dehumanized individuals depicted with a sketchy, super loose application of paint. It may remind us in purpose to the Kayabat that again shows a view of urban humanity with that sense of isolation, but using a vastly different visual language to communicate that isolation that happens within a modern urban space. Der Blauwriter, another German expressionist movement, also experiments with simplifying form and using non-naturalistic color to maximize expression. They were interested in the spiritual instead of modern life, and like Die Brücke, they believed that artistic training corrupts. They want to discover universal form that express emotions and a hoped-for spiritual renewal of the modern world. The artist Kandinsky you see here created this painting in 1912. It shows the visual vocabulary he developed to create a spiritual experience for the viewer. This work, as many of his, is titled an improvisation, like a musical composition, as he treated color as notes, as vibrations to help the viewer see and feel the destruction on the left and the hoped-for spiritual renewal on the right. The viewer should feel the expression of the lines and colors, a spiritual vibration. It's still attached to the natural world. We see forms we recognize, like a church or structure up here and a couple right here. These are sometimes called the ghost of content. We can tell this connects to our world, but it's been streamlined and highly abstracted. In each of these isms, we've seen artists concerned with the expression of emotion to help the viewer feel as a result of color and form. And there is a KU connection with Der Blauwriter. Albert Bloch was a KU art professor and the only American member of Der Blauwriter. He was born in St. Louis and worked in Germany, returning to the U.S. in 1921, joining the faculty at KU in 1923. 
This 1918 painting shows some of the joy and hoped for renewal that artist Inder Blaureiter wanted. It's an expressive, joyful work that sticks with the recognizable objects from the natural world, but depicts them using non-naturalistic color and geometric forms. Expressionism continued to help art pull away from needing to be a window on the world, using color and form not as tools of naturalism, but in order to express emotion and incite a spiritual or emotional reaction in the viewer. <laughs>